And welcome to Hakbang TV. It's me again, Jerome, posting live here in Davao City. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. We are right on time. It's a sunny, nice Sunday for everyone. And uh, this segment, we'll be able to share with you how you guys can save, how can you guys will be fully aware on your financial needs, because we have one speaker out here that will help you. Um, our speaker is an international um, FCHFP is an international certification awarded by APF and SA Asia Pacific Financial Services Association, an organization based in Hong Kong. Financial advisors who have certified this certification possess the financial planning skills to deliver a quality financial advice to all of his uh, people, a financial advisor. And what he's doing is to help people come up with a simple and doable plan that will help them achieve their financial goals. His mission is to only promote financial wellness and literacy through one-on-one -on -one consultation. Please help me welcome to talk about the financial wellness amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Give it up for Mr. Henry Segovia. Hi, sir. Hi, Jerome. Good morning. It's good to see you again. Our last Sorry. conversation was on June 22. Exactly. Happy to be here. So, yeah, we're, bang, hakaton na. Yeah. we're so happy you. that you're here as well. And I will leave mm. you to our viewers. Just let me know once you're done. Call my attention and I will guide you through our question and answer portion, sir. Okay? Okay. So, I'll share my screen now. All right. Take it away, sir. Thank you. So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, watching uh, our Hakbang uh, Hackathon. And uh, I'm here to share with you my uh, topic, financial wellness amidst uh, COVID-19 and beyond. Now, so before I begin my talk, allow me first to give a little introduction about myself other than my credentials. Now, so, uh, um, well, before I'd like to be known as a financial planner, I'd just like to be known as a father to this child. My five-year-old kid named Kiko. Yes, I know he's good looking and you can't see connect the dots for now. And uh, of course, since I have a son, I'm uh, married to my wife, Grace, for nine years. Happily married for nine years. And Grace, by the way, is also a financial planner. She's an associate. Uh, Life Management Institute uh, certified by the Life Office Management Association. It's like your master's in insurance and also a certified uh, investment solicitor certified by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we are really a couple into uh, uh, engaged very much in the industry of personal finance. No? And uh, the third picture, I'd just like to show this to you, uh, that we are a family. Okay, so tatlo kami. No, and um, um, I show this introduction to you because I just want to uh, emphasize the fact that just like everyone else, I'm also affected by this pandemic. I'm also in the middle of action, in the action of sorting my finances, just like everyone else. No, though I'm a financial uh, planner. Okay, so you know that. And um, my talk will be influenced so much by these uh, influencers in the local personal financial uh, uh, planning industry. So we have Bo Sanchez uh, sharing the abundance formula, no nonsense personal finance by Randall Chongson and Del Dedo Aspired by Mr. Chinky Tan. So these are the local writers and authors of personal finance that I follow very much. And basically the influence uh, my ideas that I share to my clients and uh, and other than my personal experience that you'll be hearing as well. Okay, so yeah. So before I start any of my financial planning talks, I always begin with three very basic important points. Uh, and what are these? Uh, financial wellness will always be a personal decision. You see, you could attend as many financial planning planning sessions, investment sessions that you want, but if you don't make a decision, nothing will happen. It's always a personal decision. It's never the decision of your next door neighbor, but yours. Number two, I've always believed that an, at any income level, financial wellness can be attained. Hindi po siya masasabi para sa mayaman lang, sa may pera lang it can be attained by anyone else. To write it, you have to make a decision. And number three, 
uh, um, and the third point always, no? and just like losing weight, to be financially well requires you to make a commitment and it requires discipline as well. No? Just like losing weight, no? any other uh, wellness dimension, no? like physical wellness, financial wellness, ganun din. So it requires decision, it requires discipline and commitment. No? So Having said that, I'd like to apologize ahead already if my statement will come out strong, if it will bother our viewers here no? when it comes to personal finance. No? So tulad nga ng lumang kasabihan, bato-bato sa langit, ang tamaan, huwag po sanang magalit, no? magbago lang. Okay, so ayun. So whenever people ask me uh, about wellness, so how do I keep myself financially healthy or well. No? Kasi to be well means you're not sick. It means you're also healthy. No? I always go back to this definition of wellness. No? Because wellness for me is the absence of sickness. No? To be well or healthy, it is a process. No? It's a process na of making well-informed making well-informed decision and commitment to make healthy choices, not just in money, but in all other dimensions of wellness. No? So because if you try to look at it, after all, our present, whatever we have right now, whatever we're going through right now, these are all the product of all the decisions that we've made in the past no? and how we reacted or responded to our life experiences. So it's an active process. No? Kaya you could be healthy right now, but tomorrow you could be sick. No? So that's how I define wellness. No? And wellness going back, has many dimensions. It's not just about financial wellness. No? So wellness has many dimensions. So you have, for example, physical wellness. That's why you go to the gym, you make a diet. No? Uh, you have social wellness. Uh, means how you interact with other people and so on and so forth. No? All this, no? all this is part of the wellness dimensions. But I'll be focusing on one thing for this uh after as it is my area of expertise, I'd like to assume. Of course, there are uh, a lot of other more experts uh, on when it comes to financial wellness, but um, I'd like to assume that, uh, no, not assume, no, I, I'd like to share more my idea on financial wellness. No? Because just like any other wellness, this has been affected, and this is where most people, for me, in my experience, have not really prepared so much. No? So when this little guy came along, known as coronavirus, it has affected everyone. No? Like on the spiritual aspect, uh, it's we cannot gather right now. We can go to church. Uh, it's a Sunday. No? So lahat ang misa online, ang, uh, ang uh, services are uh, online. No? So it just really affected our wellness. No? So... Now, let's focus on COVID. What ano bang effect ng COVID sa daily lives natin? Since the quarantine started large last uh, March 17, a lot of restrictions has resulted to cancellation of events as uh, mass gathering is no longer allowed. Businesses are temporarily closing and limiting it only to essential goods and services. The restrictions on travel, so that's why... Uh, agencies, hotels are affected. Uh, it's the, the whole the whole decision is to slow down, if not prevent the spread of the virus. That's why there's a section of the travel and food and food and medicine passes basically became an in thing, and a much like became a passport to travel just within the city. You know? Social distancing became a buzzword and a frequent reminder to wash your hands. You know? So, any effect ng COVID sa daily lives natin. Ano naman ang effect ng COVID sa ating financial life given all these restrictions? No? So, so basically, it has slowed down the movement of people and us availing of the usual goods and services. No? That's why it resulted to a lot of employees and businessmen to a loss of income and profit. No? And uh, likewise, a massive layoff and closure of businesses. Yun yung naging epekto niya. No? So, to date, uh, we are dealing with around 5 million Filipinos who are losing their job. That's around 17% of the workforce. No? So, 
ang daming nawalan ng trabaho and we're just talking of Filipinos here in our country. We haven't even uh, included pa yung mga OFWs natin who are also suffering around the world. No? For those um, request ko lang, for those who are getting pay cuts and uh, kuhan ko lang, no? request ko lang, uh, please be grateful. Huwag na kayong magreklamo kasi yung employer nyo, ramdam na ramdam din ang COVID, hindi lang po kayo. Okay? So, if you're just getting pay cuts and your business are still there, so we can still be grateful that you're still earning. Now, the question is, how do we manage these earnings in the light of the pandemic while providing for our family and other possible emergencies? No? Because if you try to look at it, this pandemic has not only caused, caught a lot of countries by surprise, it has caught also you and me by surprise. And it has revealed so much about the preparations that we've made also financially. Okay. So no matter how well your job pays or your business generated money, you have not set aside money for bad times. You cannot say you're financially well. No? So the importance of having what we call an emergency fund. No? We realize now that uh, if we lose our job, we cannot survive for a month. Okay, and daming nag panic. No, so that's why the importance of emergency fund. How we wish we can turn back uh, to cash the flat screen TV we got on loan and the new maybe the new motorcycle or car that we're paying now monthly. Kasi yan ang experiences ng mga clients ko, no. And we ignore the reviews. Uh, we ignore and refuse to talk about the sad, the scary, and all the real fact that we can get hospitalized right now. The importance of a health insurance. And we could die of COVID also. And not just COVID. COVID is just one of the illness present. The new <laughs> illness that is present. No? Okay. And uh, we further refuse to talk about the value of life insurance. No? Kasi natatakot tayo. Kasi sa insurance agents, baka mamatay. But you see the importance of it right now. Likewise, Take a look at this. No? It's a preview to our retirement. No? Should we continue to be lucky and still alive, uh, we can still experience another extreme lockdown called retirement. ECQs and lockdowns are the best time to practice your retirement. You see the effect now, right? limited movement, income was lowered, but still bills keep on coming. Okay, So limited to no income, limited movement and growing bills, no? Have you seen your bills lately? Our current utility bills have shown us that it can grow exponentially. <laughs> okay. While, will your retirement look like a lockdown? Little to no money, relying on dole outs coming from government. This is a good time to make the necessary changes in your retirement preparations. Mind you, uh, it will come before you know it, you're 60 or 65, no? Your capacity to make money will stop, but your bills will continue. Okay, so this quarantine actually has given us a sneak peek of how retirement looks like. No, it this sneak peek need not be final. We can still make the necessary changes. No, for this. No? As long as you're living, mind you, we will always find a way. The question is, what do I do now? What do I do now? Okay. Are we, there's really a need now to be wiser in our earnings, in our, in our spendings. Now that cash is king and that everything is all uncertain. So what do I do now? So allow me to share the tips no, for us to try during the quarantine period. So first tip is post manage your cash flow. Then keep your debt slow and manageable. Build an emergency fund and get insured. Now, I'll show you the details of what do I mean by these tips and how to make it happen. So let's go first to tip number one. Manage your cash flow. Manage your cash flow basically thinks, uh, talks about knowing where your money comes and knowing where it goes. You know? So manage your cash flow is not just about budgeting. It's also about managing your income, increasing your income, and of course, cutting your expenses. No? So before I move to the next slide, before I move to the next slide, no? let's take a look at one reality during the quarantine period. Okay? Has it allowed you to save? Kasi kung titingnan mo, ha, 
um, assuming that your transportation allowance is 100 pesos a day, be it of gas or taxi or whatever, it's 100 pesos a day. Actually, there were 43 working days that have passed during the quarantine period, Monday to Friday, 43 working days. Okay? Now, you should have saved already 4,300 pesos. Now, the question is this. Where is the 4,300 pesos? See? Now, if your answer to me is no, uh, uh, I use the money to help someone, I blow it all up in online shopping and food deliveries, well, congratulations, at least you know. But if you're one of those who, do ha who is clueless where the 4,300 went, again, try to look at this idea, this tip, the discipline of managing your cash flow, right? So let's talk about the first aspect of managing cash flow. Ngayon kasi apektado ang income, right? Apektado ang income. So let's take a look at first income. Now, let me start with an analogy. If you want mangoes, what do you plant? Okay. If you want mangoes, obviously, of course, niño, if you, I want mangoes, I will plant a mango seed. Okay? And a mango seed will give you mangoes? No. A mango seed will first give you a mango tree and the mango tree will bear fruits. Okay? Now, what is this telling you? What's this mango? Magtanim ng manga. No. <laughs> what am I telling you? You see, making money also follows the same process. Okay? It follows the same process. You have to give it time also. You have to also do the right things in making money. Okay? Now, what are you suggesting? Nino, do we plant money to make more money? No. Okay? What do you plant? You see, money is a representation of a value. Kaya ang one peso is one peso because it could afford you to pay for goods and service amounting to one peso. A hundred peso and a thousand peso and so on and so forth. So therefore, if you want to make more money, offer something of value. Okay? Offer something of value value. Sana kung meron lang money tree, no? So, I'd really like that, no? So, so, kasi magtatanim na lang tayo ng money tree, eh, money tree, and then uh, that's it, no? Pwedeng-pwede na. Okay? And sana of different currencies, but that's not how it works, eh. Okay? So, just understand that money stands for value. So, if you want more money, make your goods and services valuable at this time and age, okay? At this time and age, makes your goods and services more valuable, not just available. No? Example, let me give you a very simple product. Face mask. Diba? Kung titingnan mo ang face mask ngayon, sobrang in-demand siya. Eh, no? Dati hindi man natin pinapansin yan. Eh. Why? Because at this time and age, it became valuable. Okay? It is not just available, it's valuable. No? Now, whether it be a job or a small business, allow me to give you some tips no? uh, to make yourself valuable. No? So, of course, the first tip is always invest in yourself. In yourself. Learn a new skill, knowledge. No? Uh, use this quarantine period to learn it. Use this quarantine period to learn it. Now, be enterprising. Okay? So, what do I mean by enterprising? Go into business. Ano ba ba kung gaano kalakas ang online selling ngayon? Okay. Grabe, kasi people right now, uh, ano eh, yung hindi makaalis sa bahay, so they look at, and but yet still, they have to buy something, goods and services. That's why online selling is an on thing, right? So even the biggest malls right now, or department stores right now, are to online also. Hindi na siya bago, of course, with the online shopping, ano, hindi na siya bago. But then again, you might like to venture into it, go online. Likewise, uh, third tip ko, no? Don't just be, don't just be enterprising. Find a better or new ways of doing things so goods and services can reach your usual customers or suke. No? So, for example, just like to share, I, I go to this online page of, uh, uh, not online page, a Facebook page of uh, resellers, and there's this one online reseller that always caught my attention, no? Kasi, ano siya, kakaiba. 
in this particular group of all the resellers there or or, or sellers then there siya lang yung seller na video palagi ina-upload niya of a product may product demo pa ang iba kasi puro pictures lang so ikaw makakurious ka talaga kung paano yung ano yung produkto ano yung nagagawa no may for example yung nag nagdemo siya ng mat humiga pa talaga sa mat and ano and he does it so funny that's why i always watch his videos yung bang nakakabilib no and uh, guess what he's making a lot of money <laughs> he's making a lot of money because yun nga, he found ways to connect not just posting pictures okay so yun uh, what's your differentiation kasi marami tayo diyan marami tayong negosyante diyan pero what makes you different what makes you stand out no para bang fried chicken no ba may fried chicken sa tabi ng daan may fried chicken sa fast food may fried chicken sa restaurant pero bakit Iba-iba yung presyuhan ng kada fried chicken na yun. And then, it's the value, the added value. Okay, so make yourself valuable. Invest in your skills, invest in learning, invest in technology, be enterprising, and find better ways to make your product, to move your goods and services. No? So, ito, no, one valuable service right now is delivery. Now, let's take a look at the sample income. Of my friend, no? in-interview ko talaga siya. So, magkano kinikita mo ngayon? Sabi niya sa delivery. no? Kasi uh, my friend uh, sadly lost their job. No? Couple kasi sila, they lost their job and uh, they engaged into the delivery service. No? And sabi niya, Nino, ito yung gross income namin per day. So, ngayon. no? Sabi ko, ayos sa It's better than the usual. Why? Because delivery is valuable right now. Of course, sabi niya, Nino, may expenses din kami. Okay, nagsiset aside din sila for uh, maintenance and of course the daily gasoline of uh, the motorcycle they're using. No? And on the average, their net income so far for the past two months is this. No? Biro mo from a uh, minimum wage earner nag-engage with the delivery and now only work six hours a day. Ang daily wage niya dati, ngayon nasa 216 per hour na lang niya. Why? Because she offered they offered something valuable. They engaged in delivery. So delivery pa lang yan. Wala pa yung, ano, ha, yung uh, ibang uh, products na sila mismo gumagawa o nagde-distribute. Delivery lang yan. You see, there are always ways to make money. It's just that if you want people to give you their money, make yourself valuable. Okay? Yan. Now, now that I've given you a tip on how to make money, o yan, pwede na tayong mag-budget. Okay, budget ng ating expenses. No? And I'd like to suggest this formula. I took it out from the book of Bo Sanchez, The Abundance Formula. And my wife and I, we follow this formula. It's very simple formula. No? It's uh, for every 100 pesos you earn, you set aside money for ten, for tights, 10%, 10 pesos lang ang hinihingi ng Diyos. For every 100 pesos uh, na, ano, na, na earn mo, no? So based on the net income. Now, make God your business partner. Okay, at this point, umapit tayo sa so Diyos, make God your business partner. Because uh, uh, God has always been very generous in our experience. Hindi kami napapayaan. No? And we've been faithful to our tithes as well. No? So, make God your business partner. And of course, after that, pay yourself first. No? Set aside money for savings, insurance, and investment. The importance of savings is for liquidity insurance for uncertainty and investment for the future and the rest you say you spend it for your needs and wants okay so this is the formula that we suggest again suggestion lang po. of course you could change it if you like but for us this is work for us no kasi bottom line kasi importante nagba-budget ka hindi pwedeng hindi ka nagba-budget kasi pag hindi ka nag-budget para bang ano, parang wala, waldas ang pera, hindi mo mo monitor Parang yung 40 na nawala, hindi mo alam kung saan napunta. The importance of budgeting. Okay? Now, here are the fundamental expenses in this new normal. No? Of course, meron pa rin pambayad sa bahay, sa pagkain, no? Say, and these are what we call the necessary expenses. And when you say necessary, these are things needed for survival. Without this, we die. <laughs> That's how simple that is. Of course, our utilities, no? kasi gumagamit pa rin tayong kuryente, tubig. And ito, magugulat ka, internet is a, is a necessary expense na. 
And then, of course, vitamins. You have to keep yourself healthy. No? And the uh, basic health services. And ito, education. Kasi, ano na, balik na yung mga bata ngayon sa online. Kung bumalik yung anak mo sa classes, no? you consider also homeschooling. It's a good option also. Okay? So, yeah. So, these are the new fundamental expenses in the new normal. Anything above and beyond that, I guess, is luxury. I have nothing against milk tea. <laughs> okay? So, it's just that uh, you spend it once you have, uh, you buy that milk tea uh, if, ano, if uh, you have already set aside budget for this. No? Again, uh, yun. Okay. Now, here are some tips to cut down on your expenses. Okay? These are the tips that we follow also. List down what you need to buy. Okay, list down. Always list down what you need to buy. Have you ever entered the grocery without a list? Di ba ang dami mong nabibili na hindi naman pala kailangan? Okay, so a list at least tells you what you really need to buy. Consider a more affordable alternative. Example, yung sa bigas. Uh, alternative, kailangan ba talagang bilhin siya sa air-conditioned na grocery? You get the same bigas naman sa isang uh, local palengke. Di ba? Kasi sa, ano, alam ko, 60 dito sa kabila, 40. That's a big savings na rin. That's uh, 20 pesos. Okay? Minimize unnecessary movements or travel as much as possible. Uh, let's help the government also. Let's, kung hindi naman kailangan lumabas sa bahay lang, you save on gasoline pa, you save on uh, on uh, transportation pa. No? Cook rather than take out. No? So, yun, mas mura pa rin ang uh, kumain sa bahay, magluto ng sariling pagkain. At least, Alam mo kung ano yung ingredients, it's healthier that way. And uh, of course, kung uh, debatable yan, but uh, sir, kung ako lang mag-isa, uh, well, sometimes ako, agree ako doon, na minsan mas mura mag bumili ka na ng lulutong pagkain. Of course, piliin mo rin kung saan ka bibili, yung makatipid ka. Uh, kailangan talaga magtipid kasi yung source of income is medyo unstable pa ngayon. Eh. And whether it's stable, when it becomes stable too, also still follow the steps, no? Start your own vegetable garden. Kahapon may topic tayo on urban gardening. Na hydroponics yata yun. Uh, start your own vegetable garden. Yung punuin mo na yung pang pinakbet. No? And you'll be surprised how much you can save. Kasi the thing about plants no, is just they keep on uh, giving you fruits. No? Like for example, sa harap ng bahay namin yan, mayroon kaming okra. Okay? So halos linggo-linggo, hindi siya tumitigil, kakabigay ng okra. Amazing. Amazing. Magkano din yun. Okay. Uh, ito, uninstall online shopping apps. No? Kasi uh, I have nothing against online shopping, by the way, just to be clear. But to make it so accessible in your mobile phone, so medyo, medyo tempting siya. So pwede, pwede mo naman siya access sa, ano eh, sa laptop or what, no? sa kanilang webpage. Pwede ka pa rin naman mag-login doon. Eh. Um, just to minimize the temptation, uninstall your online shopping apps. No? And maybe take a closer look. Review your internet subscription and cable subscription. No? Like sabi yung ginawa namin sa bahay, we reviewed the subscription. Kasi napansin ko, purus Netflix na rin lang naman kami. Or yung online streaming. So hindi na kami masyadong nanonood ng sa cable. So might as well, uh, have it cut. Di ba? So nakatipid pa kami. Ilang libo din yan, buwan buwan. Okay? So ayun, here are some. So, of course, you could add to the list. But these are the tips that we have uh, been doing on our own also at home. Okay? So, why do people fail at budgeting? Ang sabi kasi ng iba, eh, okay ka, malaking kinikita mo kasi uh, kaya ka kaya mag-budget. Ako maliit ang, bina ang kinikita ko. Babudgetin ko pa yun? Precisely. Kung maliit ang kinikita mo, all the more, or lumit ang kita mo, all the more kailangan mo mag-budget. Okay? All the more kailangan mo mag-budget. No? So, why do we people... Uh, fail, why do we fail at budgeting? Ito, katamaran lang. Hindi nagbabudget. Kulang sa disiplina. Ito to, minsan, source ng away na, sa mag-asawa. Yung legalism. Ano yung legalism? Hindi mo na budgetan yan eh. Like, for example, nakita mo yung anak mo, kailangan dalhin sa emergency room kasi nasugatan, medyo malalim ang sugat. Nasabihin mo pa ba na, taka lang, saka na, next month na, pag nabudgetan ko na yan. So, yun, minsan, source ng So, Hindi naman ibig sabihin pag nag-budget ka, yun at yun na yun. No? So, you have to be flexible also. Huwag masyadong uh, mahigpit sa budget. No? May emergencies. Kaya importante din yung emergency para isi-share ko mga yan. Okay? Next, no? So, yun. Kasi, 
Ito, yun eh. Yung, if you understand money, sabi nga ni Dave Ramsey, one of my favorite financial planning gurus also in the States, sabi niya, money is 80% behavior, 20% head knowledge. It's what you do, not what you know. Okay? Parang, again, balik tayo, parang losing weight lang or physical fitness. Alam naman natin ang tama sa mali to hit our ideal weight. No? Alam naman natin yun. But, bakit hindi natin ginagawa? It has something to do with our behavior. Saka na, okay pa naman siguro, and so on and so forth. Ganon din sa pera. You have to check your behavior, and you have to check your money mindset. No? Kasi ang napansin ko sa Pilipino, we have romanticized already that to be poor is okay. No? Napaka-romantic natin na dressed are the poor. It's something that we need to change. Okay. Next. No? So, understand, if you cannot control your money, making more won't help. Okay. Tip number two, kung may utang ka man, please keep your, de- keep your debts, debts low and manageable. Okay? Kung pwede nga, zero debt. Kung pwede, wag nang umutang. No? So, before getting into debt, please know the following. No? Ang pag-utang, tandaan, privilege po yan, hindi po yan karapatan. Okay? If a person is lending you money, remember, you're not just lending money, you're not just borrowing money, you're getting also the trust of that person. Okay? So therefore, to be trusted is a privilege. It is not a right. No? So, pag nangutang ka, therefore, bayaran mo din. No? So, bato-bato sa langit, ang tamaan, huwag magalit. And if you have to borrow, borrow for what you need, not what you want. Ano ibig sabihin yan? No? Mind you, hindi mo ikakamatay kung wala kang bagong iPhone. Okay? So, or ano uh, so if you cannot afford to buy it wala for example ngayon no nag-iisipan namin bumili ng mountain bike kasi parang ang sarap ng exercise ngayon okay sa mountain bike so if you cannot afford to buy it don't swipe that card kasi hindi naman siya ano eh hindi naman siya needs it eh. okay so borrow for what you need likewise yan be it credit card or person limited to one huwag mong damihan yung tao na inuutangan mo huwag mo rin damihan yung credit card mo Okay, limit it to one only. Okay? Kasi, pag dumadami yung utangan mo, hindi rin gumaganda yung reputation mo, di ba? Pala utang, hindi, hindi maganda yun. At saka lumiliit ang mundo mo. Okay? Know your true credit limit. No, your true credit limit is 30% of your net income. Yun lang po. So, if you're earning, say, uh, 20,000 a month net, your true credit limit, therefore, is only 6,000. Okay? Beyond that, your you're cutting it too thinly. You're cutting it too close. No? So know your true credit limit. And that is 30% of your net income. And pay your debts, of course. And pay more than the minimum. Here's a tip, no? that so that you feel good. Simulan mo yung maliliit muna. Pay off your little debts. No? So, alam mo, kahit 100 pesos lang yan, bayaran mo. Kasi nga, tiwala ang, ang, ang inunong mo dun eh. Ang pinuhunan mo. Okay? So pay. So start with your small debts and pay it off gradually. So before getting into debt. Okay, so yun lang. No? And then, of course, uh, zero debt should be the new Sato symbol. Sabi nga ni Randall Chongson, isa sa mga sikat na financial planners din dito sa Philippines. Zero debt is the new symbol, uh, status symbol. No? So kasi, alam mo sa panahon ngayon, pag may utang ka, di ba, kapas, napaka-stressful na nga kumita ng pera, dadagdagan mo pa yung stress mo uh, with a creditor col- uh, collecting from you, diba? So try to be a zero debt free, uh, be zero debt as possible, be debt free as much as possible at this time and age, at this time and season. Pala. Tip number three, build your emergency fund. Okay, how much is an emergency fund? It's three to six months of your living expenses, Li- living expenses, not your income. Okay? That's three to six months of your living expenses. So, balikan natin yung kaibigan mo kanina. No? Sabi niya, ito na yung living expenses nila. Yung 21,840 times six months. So, at least, dapat money in the bank for liquidity, dapat nasa 131,000 for, uh, 131,000 something. Okay? Three to six months. No? Or, ano, kasi, uh, emergencies do happen. Eh. Bakit kailangan ng emergency fund? Example, who would have thought that businesses will close, that we will all be quarantined on March 17. Okay? Now, 
sabihin na natin kung hindi ka pa nagbibuild ng emergency fund mo, balik tayo sa budgeting. Kung kumikita ka ng 10,000 pesos per month, okay, sabihin mo, or 7,000, kahit 5,000 per month, okay, mag-budget ka pa rin. Set aside, you know, 100 pesos every week. That's 400 pesos already every month. Okay? Tapos, nagtumagal pa to ng one year. That's 4,800 din ang naipon mo. At biglang naging available ang vaccine. 3,000 ang vaccine. O di may pera ka, may pambakuna ka, pwede ka nang bumala na walang mask. Di ba? Practical. Okay? It need not be big ka agad. That's why you build it over time. No? So build your emergency fund because emergencies do happen. And tapos sa totoo lang, pag wala kang emergency fund, napaka-stressful. Okay? Napaka-stressful. For example, and people think of emergency, dapat ospital lang malagi. Hindi po. Emergencies are sudden expenses na hindi na budget. Okay? I'll give you an example. No? Like sa experience ko dito sa bahay, uh, biglang nawalan ng baterya yung sasakyan ko. Di ba emergency yun? So, kailangan kong bumili ng battery. Hindi ko na budget yun, na Okay? So, so, saan ko siya kinuha? Sa aking emergency fund. Okay? Emergencies need not be health-related. It could be anything na hindi mo na budget na. Okay? And, number three, it reduces the risk of making unsound decisions that would affect you financially. No? Kasi pag walang ipon, anong gagawin? Magsasangla ka ng gamit. Okay? Magsasangla ka sa mga pawn shop. At ang, ang interest doon, ang laki. Okay? Ang laki. Palagay natin 4% or 3% na lang every month. Times 12, that's 36% per annum. Wala pa yung add-on rates dyan. Di ba? It's an unsound decision. Kaya nga, have an emergency fund. Para pag panahon ng emergency, dun ka kumuha. Okay? And always maintain it at 3 to 6 months of your monthly expenses. Okay, and tip number four, get insured. So, um, life insurance is one of those products na, um, na talagang hindi na-appreciate ng Pinoy, no? but very, very important. No? So, in times like this, contracting a serious illness like COVID is very high. That's why we are in quarantine. No? You might argue that, well, ang TB nga, mas mataas. Oo, nandun na tayo. Pero ang TB, may gamot na. Ang COVID, wala pa. No? And if you're married no? or with kids, consider it seriously. Kasi saan pupulutin ang pamilya mo pag may nangyari sa'yo? For the single naman, sabi, hindi ko naman kailangan insurance, wala akong dependent. Precisely, who can you count on should something happen to you? Would it still be fair for your parents? Okay, Of course, I will not question your parents' love. Okay? I will not question it. But the question is, will it be fair to them? Okay. So, ayan. So, let me let me illustrate the value of life insurance. No? Now, balikan natin. Ano ba ang basic needs ng family or ng uh, pamilya? Di ba? It's food, shelter, clothing, di ba? Ano pa ba? These are the basic needs. No? And all of this is determined by one factor. Your family gets to enjoy this because of one factor. Your income. Tama ba? Di ba? Your income. Now, actually, kahit sabihin natin na basic needs ito, come to think of it, it, it has also become a lifestyle for your family. Come to think of it. No? It has become a lifestyle for your family. The kind of food that you eat, your family eats, the kind of house that they live in, the, the kind of clothes they wear, is determined by the size of your income. Kaya, protect your income. No? Protect your income. Not just for you, it's for your family. Okay? So ideally, how much? At least should be 10 times of your annual income. Okay? Now, get a health insurance also. Tingnan mo to, oh. this is a COVID bill. No? According from Stanford Tooth, it's a show in, uh, in one of our leading channels here. No? Somebody who was uh, in Bacolod, ito yung bill niya. Almost 4 million. Fortunately, this happened before April 15, kaya na shoulder to ng PhilHealth. Okay? Come to think of it, ngayon, pag tinamaan ka ng COVID, kamusta naman? Saan kamay ng Diyos kukunin ng pamilya mo ang pambayad sa hospital kung wala kang health insurance? And it's not just COVID that you should be worried about. Okay? According to 
our field health, these are the leading causes of death in the Philippines. No? Kung titingnan mo, magastos yan. Hindi old age ang leading cause of death in the Philippines. It's illness, and if I may add, also accidents. Okay, ang tanong ngayon, kung wala kang any form of health insurance, kahit field health na lang, saan mo kukunin yan ang pambayad? Saan nila kukunin ang pambayad? Right? That's why at this day and age, please get a health insurance. And if you can afford to pay it, okay, di ba? Kami natin, afford mo naman bayaran, pinag-ipunan ko yan. Pero seriously, did you really save money para may pambayad ka sa hospital or was it for something else? Di ba? Again, if you don't have insurance, you also will make unsound financial decisions. Your families will make unsound financial decisions. Isasangla mo yung ba, yung gamit nyo para lang may pambayad sa hospital. And, and sometimes you have to sell it. You sell it at a very sacrificed price. Why? Kailangan ka agad eh. Immediately. If you, well, as if you have insurance, di ba mas relax? Okay. And likewise, so take a look at this. Paano ba ang Pinoy pag nagkasakit ng malala? Okay, this is a study conducted by Sun Life. No? So, tingnan mo, no? If somebody will get seriously sick, 40% will rely on the income of their spouse and partner. No? Kawawa naman. Okay? So, kaya importante, kumuha ka ng insurance. So, ito, support na from families and friends. That's how we will, that's how most of us prepare. And may option naman, get a health insurance or life insurance. The premium is not the same as the coverage. No? Please get the life. For, for the love of your family, for your family, please get the health insurance at this time and the life insurance. Okay? Whether or not you get convinced, whether you get an insurance or not, understand someone will have to pay. It's either you, you pay for the insurance premium, or you pay for the bills, or your family. It's not going to be my decision. It's going to be your decision. Okay? And every time I get to conduct no, a financial planning, ito palagi ang lumalabas. Ako, sir, tataya na lang ako sa loto. Okay? Tataya ako sa para para umaman. Hindi na yun sa life insurance. Tingnan mo yung odds of winning sa loto. Di ba ang laki? <laughs> Di ba? The odd of getting hit by a lightning twice in the same situation, in the same place, is higher than winning a lotto. Okay? Now, tingnan mo, kung kumuha ka ng insurance, no? ito, 25 pesos, kaya araw-araw ka tumatay, ah, no? you know, regardless of the insurance company, ah, tingnan mo, pwede ka kumuha ng up to 1 million to 2 million na coverage where the probability of winning for your family is 50-50 should you get sick. And 100% should something happen to you. Iba mas malaki ang may iiwan mo. <laughs> so, ayun. If nothing against Lotto, by the way, but, you know, take a look at your odds also. Take a look at your odds. Okay? Tinatanong din ako, bakit kailangan ng life insurance? No? So, bakit kailangan ng life insurance? Okay? Tapos, uh, ito pa pala, no? so, in-add lang, no? totoo, 90% of lottery winners, even dito sa Philippines, after a few years, namumulubi ka agad. Kasi nga, hindi nila pinaghirapan. Eh. Walang nagtuturo din sila kaya mag-manage. No? So, 90%. Totoo yun. You, you just have to Google on that. No? So, yun. Now, tinatanong ako palagi, no? ninyo, pa ka may life insurance on a personal note? No? Every time I conduct kasi financial planning session. So allow me to share my personal reason why I got myself insured. First of all, I did not get myself insured because I'm going to die. Kasi sigurado naman yun eh. Wala pa po kong alam na na-exempt. Okay? After biblical times, no? Wala pa po kong alam na na-exempt. No? I got a life insurance because my wife and child has to go on living. That's why I really got myself a sufficient insurance coverage. At least enough for them to live comfortably for the next 8 to 10 years. No? 10 kung matipid ang asawa ko. Alam ko naman, very matipid and very practical ang asawa ko. Financial planner din. Okay? Second of all, I got a life insurance because I would like to make sure that my son has a mother if it's my time to go. Kasi ayoko ma-pressure yung asawa ko magtrabaho. Okay? Kasi kailangan kumita. Okay? So, ano bang binili ko sa life insurance? 
oras ng asawa ko para sa anak ko. Okay? Oras ng asawa ko. With the insurance proceeds, I made sure my wife does not need to work full time to provide for their needs. I bought my son his mother's time. 8 to 10 years to be specific. You see, it was never about the money. It's about the things that insurance proceeds can do for my wife and child. So, kailangan ba ang life insurance? Simple lang. Kung mahal mo pamilya mo, kumuha ka ng life insurance. Okay? At huwag mong tipirin na palagi minimum lang. Kung kaya mo more, get more. Okay? To end, let me recap what I have shared with you. So, tip number one, Manage your cash flow. It's important that you have to be innovative, of course, and creative to make money at this stage. Adjust. Hindi mag adjust ang mundo sa'yo. Adjust mo ang business mo. Adjust mo yung skills mo. Okay? Do a financial overhaul to discover any leaks or expenses that can be minimized or done away completely. No? Sabi ng kaibigan ko si Ms. Didi Sarol who is watching right now. Okay? Do a financial overhaul. Okay? This is a good time. No? Kasi nasa bahay ka lang. Keep your debt slow and manageable. If possible, make it zero. Wala nang utang. It's stressful enough making money. Relieve yourself from the stress of creditors going after you collecting. Build an emergency fund equal to three to six months no? uh, of your expenses because emergencies do happen when minimize the stress at those times kasi alam mo may pera ka, may panggastos ka. Number three, Four, get insured. You are the greatest asset in all this. Your family is exactly enjoying the kind of life they have right now because of you working. Okay? Ideally, five to ten years of your annual income. Okay? Five years for critical illness. Kung hindi kaya, start securing one to two years muna. Kasi alam ko naman, uh, insurance comes with a price. No? But hey, sulit siya. No? Basta start, start somewhere. It is not for you. It is for your loved ones. No? So get insured. No? If you notice, kung napansin nyo, wala namang bago sa tips ko. Diba? Because in reality, the only thing that has changed in our situation in the area of personal finance is how you generate income. It's still the same. There's no new fundamentals. Okay? You still need to budget. You save for liquidity. Get insured for the uncertainty. And invest for the future. Siguro ang bago mong gawin ngayon is work with a financial advisor. It did not be me. You have friends who are financial advisors. Work with them. Because mind you, iba kung may financial advisor ka, it, it gives you a different view of things. And these people are very objective. They'll tell you black and white. Okay? And wag mo yung financial advisor, by the way, nabibentahan ka lang. Yung, tuturuan ka talaga ng tama. Okay? Tuturuan ka ng tama. Okay? So... I would advise that you get a financial coach, no, advisor, much like a gym instructor, di ba? Okay, uh, help you manage your weight, no? A coach of some sort, no? It could be near any advisor, you know. Okay, that would be the new thing that you can do in this new normal. Okay, so yan yung, yun yung mga tips ko, no? Remember, we have been to a lot of changes, pandemic, no? In the history of mankind, no? And let me quote Charles Darwin, no? It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the, mo it's the one that is most adaptable to change, that lives within the means available and works cooperatively against common threats. Ang COVID, lumabas na yan, nandyan na yan. It's something that we need to work with. No? Actually, uh, we've been to a lot of next normal, new normal thing already. But still, we survive. On financial planning, the fundamentals haven't changed. Make a budget. Keep your debt slow. Um, save for an emergency. Get insured. And if you have extra, try investing for the future, for your retirement, and for your child's education. Okay? With that, I end my talk. So again, on behalf of my son, thank you very much for listening to me. And I hope you get to invite me for one-on-one -on -one consultation to give a talk in your uh, office about the value of personal financial planning. There are a lot of topics uh, that I can share to you about financial planning. You may reach me in this uh, mobile number and email, and you also, you also follow me in my Facebook page. Now, with that, I end my discussion. 
and I turn you back over to Jerome for any question that uh -huh. you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sir Nino, for sharing these um, expertise of yours. Uh, we know this is really a timely manner that people should really uh, mm -hmm. reserve, should uh, mag-ipon, mag-corona uh, mag insurance for their health and for their future. Spend well to your money. Don't spend too much of your expenses. Uh, spend lang kung ano yung meron ka. Budget everything so that you'll, you'll still have more money in the coming days. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your time. I know it's a family day today, but we are really so happy that you are really came prepared and uh, give us this very wonderful presentation. All of the Hakbang team are taking down notes kasi minsan lang magkaroon ng financial advisors sa mga ganitong talks. Kasi alam ko you guys are so very busy. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And have a good My day. My pleasure, Jerome. Uh, my pleasure. Yes, Thank you so much. And you. on that note, uh, Mad Hackers, we will be back by after this few reminders. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye.